Lord, what is your utmost joy? Reverend Dr. Holly Namok Lee, United Methodist Church. Translator, Mrs. Irene Park. Reader, Mr. Jacob Lee. This video is made by Reverend Dr. Holly Namok Lee, who is a minister of the United Methodist Church. She got a degree of doctor in ministry at Claremont Theological Seminary in California. She is an executive director of Menowan Ministry. She carries a healing ministry. She is an author of 40 books and led 1,000 revival services and over 200 seminars for ministers. Now she lives in California with her husband, Reverend Peter Yongtek Lee. She is the fourth daughter of Dr. Sun Bum Yun, former president of Methodist Theological University in Seoul, Korea. In the study of Christian spirituality, the final stage is the throne-centered life. Then, what would be the meaning of throne-centered life? According to the teaching program for Christian spirituality, it specifically means to live with joy and pleasure of the Lord. In the Gospel of Matthew, through the parable of talents, we see the imitation to the joy of the master for the faithful servants. Here, what could be the joy of the master, Kara? It could also be translated as a feast. Neither slaves nor servants could participate in such feasts. Therefore, being invited to a feast implies the liberation from the status as a slave. Not only it means the liberation from the slave status, but it also means acquiring the new identity as a child of a dignified king. Furthermore, it does not merely mean the acquirement of a dignified status. It includes the fullness of joy constantly enjoying the master's presence face to face. For everybody, there is time to be joyful and time to be sad. And I was curious what kind of joy our Lord would want to share with us. To what kind of joy would he invite us? His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your new Lord. Matthew 25, verse 23. I truly wanted to taste it. I figured it would not be the roller coaster type of joy, which is only momentary. I also thought it would be different from the kind of joy we usually feel when we have achieved something or acquired something. I really wanted to find out the genuine joy of the Lord. Even though we can see from the Bible here and there, I felt it would be good to ask the Lord directly. He complimented for the question and told me to first search the vocabulary joy in the Bible. It seemed like the Lord's commandment, law is my joy, was found most often. I asked the Lord what that means. Let your tender mercies come to me that I may live. For your law is my delight. Psalm 119, verse 77. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me light. Psalm 119, verse 92 and 93. There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. Isaiah 24, verse 11. When I invite you to a feast, what would be the most important factor? Undoubtedly, it would be the food on the table. That's correct. The best reason for a joy at a feast is because of abundant food prepared. In Jewish feasts, wine was always plentiful. My word, my rules, and regulations, and my laws are all food. They are the food which revive you. As you feel joy and satisfaction when you eat food, my joy is watching you eat the bread of life abundantly, which I give to you. 
The next type of joy which I could find the most was related to salvation. So the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Isaiah 51 verse 11. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Psalm 51, verse 11 and 12. What would be the greatest sadness for parents concerning their children? It would be when they lose a child. What kind of joy would they feel when they finally find their child? Their joy would probably reach the sky. That is why the father of the prodigal son gave a feast. Even for myself, I feel the most joy and pleasure when I rescue my children from Satan. The joy after having rescued the children from the hands of the enemy and sharing the booty is so thrilling that it pierces the sky. I am happy to find my lost children, but the best joy that has no match is when the lost child comes back on his or her own. There is a huge difference between searching for the lost child and the child's own return, because they have repented and realized the Father's love. The Lord, your God, in your midst, the Mighty One, will say, He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Zephaniah 3, verse 17. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Luke 15, verse 22 through 24. Have you ever experienced joy which you cannot control? You would naturally dance, sing, and be thrilled. It is such joy. When I hear the word feast, it reminds me of the feast given by Lazarus. Wasn't it also given out of joy? There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. John 12, verse 2. You can say this is a feast of thanksgiving as well as a feast given by a witness. Lazarus has experienced amazing heavenly miracle and glory as he was healed and came alive from the dead. He experienced my compassion, mercy, and love. Therefore, he went ahead with the feast even though he knew what could happen to him. It was also because he wanted to testify my miracle. How could a man who was once dead sit next to me? It was because I gave him his life back. Likewise, expressing gratitude toward healing and miracle to everybody is witnessing me as God. I gain the greatest pleasure when I am witnessed publicly. Also, my other biggest pleasure is when I see you bear fruit. By this, my Father is glorified, that you would bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. John 15, verse 8. For a fig tree, bearing fruit is bearing life, or people. Wouldn't that be the same as giving birth to children? If there is no fruit in faith life, that would be the ugliest. When you bear abundant fruit, my joy surely overflows. You will become my disciples and render glory to me. And you will become precious beings as you continue on with my ministry. It is the same when I lamented over the fig tree without any fruit. There are many people, despite of the fact that they have been my disciples for a long time, they cannot evangelize and are infertile. 
have you not experienced the joy disappear when you were infertile? Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? Genesis 18, verse 12. You shall no longer be turned forsaken, nor shall your land any more be turned desolate. But you shall be called Hesphala, and your land Beulah. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. Isaiah 62, verse 4. My great joy is derived from the soil with produce, the fruitful soil and not wasteland. Hesva means my joy is in you, and it expresses the biggest pleasure. If the ground exists but becomes a wasteland or a desert, what good would that be? The land that shall be married means the fruitless soil will be bearing grains and fruits in abundance. Therefore, you must evangelize to bear life, and my joy will increase. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Ephesians 4, verse 13 and 15. Since you have grown vegetables, you would know. It is joy to watch them grow. I used to be so happy as I watched the squash grow every day. When my grandson was born a year ago, he was so tiny, but now he is walking and playing with his older brother. It is so satisfying and proud to watch him. How would you feel if your grandson still wears diapers and still wants a milk bottle to feed on? Isn't it simply gratifying to watch them grow? I do want to see you mature into a perfect human being as what you believe and what you know are consolidated together. It is my joy and pleasure to watch you grow and mature. But most of all, what would be my biggest joy and pleasure? The saints who become one with me. As I am in you and you are in me, encountering someone showing me the intimacy gives me the utmost pleasure. Because there is no need to worry about losing them, no worry about their leaving me. And because I can embrace them forever. You understand the joy of marriage, don't you? As two people become one and enjoy the peace and love, how much relief and rest it provides. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Revelations 21, verse 1 through 3. All the joy from the Bible is concluded in this. I want to be your God, and I want to be with you. The content of Revelation 21 is my first and final purpose. Regaining you, living with you, being with you always, that is my utmost pleasure. Therefore, I want you to come inside me and be united with me. That is the biggest joy and delight you could possibly give to me. Do not partner with Satan. Rest in me. I will become everything for you. I will be with you forever, and I will be the God of Emmanuel. Emmanuel, this is the biggest gift of joy I can give to you. It is living in the same sanctuary together from the beginning to the end. Aren't you are my sanctuary? By now, have you tasted even the tiny bit of my pleasure? As I listen, you are so different from us. We tend to gain pleasure from what we see and what we own from the value of space. 
but you gain pleasure from being together throughout eternity. Today, I recognize the value of being together in more depth. I desire to be immersed in that inspiring state even deeper. In Hebrew, Menua is an adjective that describes being restful. We use the term Menua as a noun. Please hit the subscribe button for Yundamok TV, News from Heaven. Thank you for watching this video.